Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. These final games between Nakat and Wesley that were played recently have been in one word exquisite. Both have shown some incredible skills, but mainly what goes on in these types of fast games is that up until the point where the opening ends, it's all about the player who doesn't get there without blunder but the one who can take advantage of any opportunities. All the openings Wesley and Nako chose to play are repetitive. If it wasn't a King's Indian, it was mainly the Spanish. We also saw the Italian, the Scotch and the Petrov. Let's see what they chose to go for today, but don't keep your hopes up. This is game 21 of 34. Naka White goes for, okay, only for opening. It's the fourth time he deviates from his normal d4. And it has to be either an Italian or Spanish. How can we tell? Forecasting requires historical data. Since Naka only went for either Italian or Spanish, what the chance is going to deviate? e5 by Wesley, and this is how Naka chooses to play it. It has all the elements of the Italian, but it doesn't have to be. Knight of six. And though you don't need to necessarily cover, Naka does with the pawn. C6 was committed by Wesley, who makes his intentions crystal clear. Knight of three, a normal developmental response, and Naka is in fact inviting the attack on his bishop. What does Wesley do? This bishop was indeed attacked in this way. If you remove this pawn with this capture, check out how fast you can gain control of the center. In with a check and bishop d7, and whether you choose to trade, go knight c3, a4 or anything else that comes out of this one pretty okay. Coming back, when this bishop got attacked, Naka retreats and immediately Wesley storms the bishop in with this check. He's expecting obviously c3. Go for this. The idea is to go for a bishop retreat to d6 to be able to cover for any potential taking on e5. This is not what happened here. This bishop check was met by a bishop response. Wesley traded without hesitation and it doesn't really matter too much how we capture here. Naka used the knight. Any ideas what Wesley are cooking? Though sometimes it would be wise to cover this pawn on e5. Do you think Wesley covers? Nope. He lashed out with this attack. And White, he could not remove e5 because once you get this move going, this is how you lose Mr. Bishop. And probably the game. So no take 25 just yet, but Naka opens up an escape path for his bishop. Because Wesley will attack him. When Naka opened up, and he could have done this in either direction, Wesley pinned the knight. Some people love these types of aggressive games. Me, myself, and I included. H3 takes and takes. And if anyone is wondering why the trade took place, it's because of this. When this bishop came under fire, Mr. Bishop retreated for the second time. And here is where the trick comes in. After takes and takes, Wesley delivered this check. And however you choose to block, this pawn on e4 is a potential weakness. c3, and Wesley is concerned with d6. You could not allow this threat under any circumstances. For this very reason, Wesley got his king to safety, and Naka copies that. Queen d3 may look stronger, but he's likely to invite this attack. If queen c4, there is this rook response, and black should be fine. After castles by Naka, Wesley came up with a sneaky reply. This is what he did. And depending on how Naka plays it, expect something like rook d8. 
Rookie one by Neca led to this very defensive response. What was Wesley worrying about here and what prompted him to go for h6? How does Neca answer here? It was all about this knight maneuver to the rim. It doesn't do much yet, but leave things as they are. And do expect this knight to use the pin to get the knight into g6. Knight c5 going after this central pawn. Let's see the pawn to get covered. We have mentioned a rook move to d8. And this was the right time for Wesley to go for it. Before Napa goes for whatever move he does, what side would you prefer to have and why? Though quite difficult to choose, let's get some pointers out and then evaluate the position. How strong is the rook on the eight? How strong is the knight on the rim? And how strong and effective is the black queen? With her being as good as her side, unless she makes her way into the game, white might be better. However, white seems to have some problems too. What or how would you expect to handle an attack such as Rook d3. Bishop c4 is therefore something to consider and something like Rook d1 to challenge the Rook may also be something. This is how Naka played it in the end. I have no idea whatsoever why Wesley didn't attack the Queen. Do you really want to see the movie executed? <laughs> this was that move. Why? Well, Wesley is the only one who knows. Knight takes check and King G7. Got this knight to back off. And this is where you need to be careful. With the threat on F6, this knight was arrested. This is how that captures. If I don't forget, I do need to come back to this position because Naka might have missed an important opportunity. Queen b5 by Wesley led to this silent attack, and though f6 is expected, Wesley chooses to go for this pawn. How bad does it look? It looks pretty bad in so many different ways. Queen in with a check, king to the rim, and now bishop takes, and this was it. With a threat and mate on g6, Wesley resigned. Why did Wesley go pawn grabbing on b2? Though, though by this stage Wesley was already toast. Let's come back to see a what if scenario here. After knight takes check and king g7, Naka went for this knight move. Let's try something else instead. What if we go for this check on f5? Should the knight be arrested? How would you deal with this check? King h6, another check, and, and knight h5. And once this pawn lashes onto this knight, he's in black busted here. F takes g4, and h takes g4. There is no way black escapes with this development. So the verdict is as follows. Naka was the first to blunder. No, let me take that back. Wesley was the first to mess up when he chased after the knight with this move. Knight takes and king g7. And with knight g4, this is how Naka blunders too. It's not the type of blunder where you draw a piece, but it was a clear missed opportunity. Takes, takes, and queen b5 appeared to be very normal. What was not normal was the move Wesley went for after g5. If you go f6, white has no attack whatsoever. What possessed Wesley to go for this pawn on b2? And how many times do you get to see something as innocent as this to be the beginning of the end? This pawn grabbing on b2 was the final nail in the coffin. After queen f6, with a check, 
king h7, and bishop takes, and it was all she wrote, and this is how Naka snatches a very easy and effortless point. Each point gained is a step closer to winning this finals, and how many times do we get to see how easy it is for players of any caliber to pay the ultimate price? So next time when you blunder, you at least have an excuse. When there is plenty of cash on the table, a loss like this today could mean the difference of thousands of dollars. With another invaluable victory by Naka in just 24 moves, he's now a point ahead of Wesley, and no doubt Wesley is beginning to go back into the cellar. More to come, of course. So I'm choosing everyone. This is your chess puzzle.